Hello, students of event evangelism. Good to see you. Hey, have to uh, have a lecture. I'm going to kind of do both of these together, but they are going to be separate lectures, and uh, I think you'll enjoy both of them. Uh, I'm looking right now at, on your canvas, lecture number seven, when things change. So let's take a moment, have a word of prayer, and uh, ask the Lord to help us with this. So you're coming along on an event evangelism and something major happens. It may be a weather situation, a financial situation, a staffing situation, a facility situation, but everything now changes. Something you were planning on having come in, an inflatable or whatever, it's not happening. So now there is a major change in the event that you were gonna do. How do you handle that? Because almost without exception, there will be some tweakage and some change in whatever you do. How you handle those changes could make a big difference on how the event turns out. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, um, we make plans, but it's all in your hands. And I ask in Jesus' name that you would help us to discover what should we do, what should be our strategy, when something in the event that we had spent a lot of time planning now changes, uh, how do we handle it? So, Lord, uh, may this be just a very uh, powerful, helpful, practical, and biblical lesson. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, um, number one, when things change, 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 through 6. This is where David comes back to Ziklag, and everything in the world has happened bad to David. I mean, one thing after another, he uh, wanted to serve Saul. Saul is after his life, so David's kind of running as a fugitive. He then joins up with the Philistines. Can you imagine that, of all things? Then the Philistines won't even fight with him, him and his men, because they think he's going to turn against them. So they got to go back to Ziklag. They go back to Ziklag only to find that it's burned with fire. Their women and children have been taken. And I guess got to tell you, David is at the all-time low. The men that he's invested in have picked up stones to stone him. But the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse number 6, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. A great statement. He got back up. I say this. He put his focus back on God. He put his faith back in God's word, and he got his foot back on God's path. He gets up, starts going after the Malachites who had invaded their city and overcomes them. And really, things begin to really turn around in David's life and kingdom uh, at that point. But a lot of things changed in David's life and how he handled those disappointments, those unfulfilled expectations are going to make a big difference. You get in the middle of this event evangelism and you've been working on this for weeks and even months and there is a change that is drastic. It may not have caused the event to be canceled, but it's definitely going to change the focus, the, it's, the dynamics of the whole event are going to change now. So what do you do? So let's look at our notes because this is really good. Number one, this is great, student. It's okay to be disappointed for a short time. There, there is no way that you're not going to be disappointed about what has just occurred. Oh, man, I was really hoping that we would get that photographer so we could take pictures of all the people that were visiting. We really thought we were going to have this kind of food. We're not going to be able to get this meal now. We're over budget. We can't do this. We really wanted these decorations. You get disappointed. It is okay to be disappointed. However, you cannot stay in that disappointment. You have to do something with it. Now, if you want to continue to doubt God and get discouraged and get depressed and be in despair and destroy yourself, you can't. Or you could turn that around and focus on God. Look what it says here. Uh, it's okay to be disappointed for a short time. So you and your team are like, wow, man, we're really disappointed. Go ahead, suck your thumb, do whatever you have to do. But look at number two. Then you focus back on the things, uh, on these things. Now, Dr. Scheller, how much time? Well, I would tell you this, not more than 24 hours. 
In 24 hours, you need to be focused back on God, your faith back in God's word about, hey, God, God's still got something great, and get your foot back on God's path. But if you feel disappointed for about a day, I'm telling you, it's okay, because we all will be there. Just get back up. Look at number two. First of all, ask the question, you know, what is really important? you know what, we're not going to have this now. It's not going to be the China we wanted. It may not be the speaker we wanted to get, but you know what, what's really important? We still have an event. We still want to get the gospel out. We still have many un unsaved people that are coming. Find out, remember, go back over what's really important. Number two, think about what attributes God um, uh, is trying to reveal to you right now. You know, Lord, you are still sovereign. Nothing's changed with you. This hasn't taken you by surprise. You are still powerful. You can still make all this happen, God, the way that you want. Focus back on the attributes of God. This is not a you thing. This is a God thing. And maybe the changes, the more difficult, the greater the obstacles, is God going to be proving himself in a greater way? Because he will provide. He is powerful. He is omniscient. He is omnipotent. He's, om uh, he's omnipresent. He's going to be there for you. Okay? Number three. This is good now. First two are a little bit spiritual and emotional. All right? Number three. Assess what you still have or what you can still do. All right. You get your team together. And you go, okay, okay, so we're not going to be able to do this now. Uh, we no longer have that park to go there. We don't, we don't have that barbecue grill. What do we still have? What do we still got? We still got these people. We still got this. We still got our speaker. We still have, you know, these things. Assess what you still have. Focus, highlight on the assets that you still have. Number four, ask for creativity again. Okay, Lord. How do we overcome this obstacle now? Go back through the questions uh, about um, the brainstorming, what do you have, and all of those. Go back over those questions again. Ask God for creativity again. Number two, get alone to think. You know what? You, you got your whole team together, and that's fine. But tell everyone, listen. Let's take a few hours. Let's take a day, whatever. I don't know what your time frame is when you found that out. I mean, you might have found out the week of the event, so you don't have much time. You might have found out a month now. Well, if you found out a month to go, say, hey, let's, let's give this two, three days to really pray about it. Let's come back together with some ideas and see. So get alone to be able to think about what's just happened. By the way, so what if the change happens on the very day of the event? And I have had that happen more times than not. Go somewhere in the facility, the church, wherever you're having it, and just get alone with God. God, I need everyone's depending upon me. I'm the leader of this thing. Lord, what do I do? Just go somewhere and say, hey, you know what? I need about 30 minutes alone with God. Just tell the people that. Hey, they'll be praying for you if you tell them that. And just get alone to think. And it's amazing. God will help you. He, he will guide you. But sometimes just getting alone with him, staying with everybody, isn't necessarily the best thing to do. Um, I need 30 minutes. I need an hour. We'll come back together in an hour. Everyone go get something to drink or eat or whatever. And we'll, we'll talk about this. I know the thing starts at 6 and I know it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon. But I just need some time alone right now to try to figure out how we want to do this. I'm telling you, that's good advice. Number five, don't panic on the time. The Lord knew that this would happen. Ooh, that's really good. Now listen, don't panic, God. You knew that this was going to happen. I don't know why you didn't tell us earlier, Lord, but it's for you to prove yourself. And we're not going to panic. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And you know what? Our testimony now becomes more important than the activity. And Lord, you knew this was going to happen. You knew when it was going to happen and why it was going to happen. And we didn't. We would have planned around it if we could. But now, Lord, we're not going to panic. We're not going to freak out. We're going to trust in you. And that may be the testimony that maybe the fellow workers need to see. All right, number six. Go forward with the same enthusiasm, effort, 
and excitement, the three E's. Go forward with the same enthusiasm, effort, and excitement as before, maybe even more. Okay, you get back up and you don't go like, okay, well, we'll just do it halfway. No. If there is ever a time to be enthusiastic, excited, and stronger effort, it is after a change has occurred. You are, your attitude, your spirit is going to carry a lot of people with you at this point. So you go back at it, not with less, I'm not as enthusiastic. We're not going to get this now. We're not going to have this now. No, no, no. You come back at it with greater effort, greater excitement, and greater enthusiasm, and your whole team needs to see that. And then number seven, which could be number one, it could actually be number two, three, four, five, or six, but stay flexible. Stay flexible. It's one of my favorite statements I've heard from somebody. Uh, flexible people never get bent out of shape. I love that. Flexible people never get bent out of shape. Stay flexible. God will show you some things. All things are going to work together for good. And the purpose of that was to conform you to the image of Jesus Christ. So stay flexible. By the way, something else will probably change before the event occurs as well. So stay flexible. Let's look at these again. These are so good. It's okay to be disappointed for a short time. Focus back on these things. What is really important and what attribute of God is he revealing through this, through this situation? Assess what you still have or what you can still do. Ask again for creativity. Go back through the questions about, well, what do we have? What can we do? Da, 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 da. Don't panic. Don't freak out. You're going you're gonna to mess up everything with everyone. Go forward with the same enthusiasm, effort, and excitement that you had before, maybe even more. And number seven, everyone together, stay what? Stay flexible. That'll really help you. Okay, that's a great lesson because you'll never do an event. See, Satan hates these evangelistic events. Something's going to come into that evangelistic event. It's going to change from what your original planning was you got to handle that change properly or you're going to lose your event. All right? We'll see you in just uh, uh, i got another lesson I'm going to do right away. But you may not watch it for a couple days. It's going to be on delegation. I think you'll like it. Okay. Thank you very much.